So I'm Michaela. Um, I'm a core team member of uh, Video Lab, and I'm very much involved in uh, the community around it. Um, so we're here joined today with uh, Jamio Busari. I'm really sorry if I completely mispronounced your name, actually. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's OK. Uh, I don't think you mispronounced it. Uh, um, I'll say Jamio Busari, which is, uh, yeah, Jamio. So it's just where you, you place the emphasis. <laughs> okay, tell you. Thank you. I was I've been going over it in, in my head the whole time, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna miss it up. <laughs> well, um, um, so I've seen you participate in many different prestigious organisations. Um, some as a associate professor, I believe, at Maastricht University, a former executive member of MBMO, and uh, honorary fellow of the Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons of Canada, and many more, I'm sure. Um, so, uh, I guess my, my first question would be, what would you say your overarching mission and goals are with your activities and daily practice? So, I've been asked so many questions, but this is, <laughs> let me say, this is the, 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 the toughest one, <laughs> the most, the toughest one in a sense, like a comprehensive, uh, 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 a question that requires a comprehensive answer. Um, my overall mission is, simply put, making a difference. Um, a reflection, m m having um, um, participated and, and achieved uh, all the accolades academically and professionally, um, um, these have been the results of me trying to uh, achieve or prove something because for me to get through, I needed to prove that I was good enough. And uh, um, essentially, when I describe myself, I I, I, I look at I, I see my professional and academic career through three pillars. Uh, one is um, um, as a scholar, um, um, researcher, scientist, mm -hmm. and the other is like a, a clinician, which is also what I train to be. And then the, the third is as um, um, a healthcare leader, leadership. So those three things sort of exemplify uh, um, who I am. And then what you then see is that depending on which area of focus, if it has to do with my scholarly work in medical education, for example, then being a member of the executive board of the Dutch Medical, um, medical Education Board, for example, is a reflection of that. Now, um, if it's uh, being an associate professor of medical education is a reflection of that. If you look at my uh, leadership uh, activities, uh, for example, then being a founding member of Sanokondu or being uh, um, a, a Canadian certified um, a physician executive is a reflection of that. And if you want to look, if you look at my clinician role or as a doctor, then being um, a, an honorary fellow of the Royal College um, of Physicians and Surgeons of Canada is a reflection of that. Or being a, a, a clinician scientist at, uh, at um, Ontario Tech University, for example, is also a reflection of that. So, I mean, this is probably a, a long answer to mm -hmm. the question, but it gives you um, uh, some background to the, um, the, the, the um, uh, myriad of um uh you know mm. uh achievements i would say uh to put it uh, um that i uh the, that i have um you know uh you know put together over over the years definitely um and going into maybe looking to your to your research i obviously um was having quite a look at some of the papers um and i did notice that you you cover a wide range of topics um, what would you say your preferred areas of, of research are? Yeah. So my preferred area of research at this present time and at this stage of my career is in the area of, of social justice. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. And then social justice within the field of those three areas. Social justice in clinical work as mm -hmm. a doctor, as a physician. Social justice in medical education, which is why I'm, I'm going to Amy, for example, mm -hmm. uh, and, and social justice in the area of leadership. For example, uh, I am uh, the uh, commission, commissioning editor uh, at BMJ Leader. BMJ Leader 
is uh, uh, one of the sub subsidiary journals of BMJ. And leader is all about leadership. And being a commissioning editor there um, gives me the opportunity to push for social justice when it comes to um, 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 doing work in the area of leadership as it applies to healthcare, but also to leadership in, in general. Brilliant. Yes, because I have seen, um, obviously, the a little bit about what your talk is going to be about, and Amy. Could you give any insights into that, obviously, without, without telling us your whole talk? Yeah. Well, you know, so so I'm just I'm going to have a conversation, a dialogue with the, the attendees there. And I'm not, I know one of the things um, so so one of the things that um, 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 that in, in preparing for this work is uh, coming across the term uh, syllogism. Uh, I don't know if you know if you're familiar with that word syllogism. No. But syllogism is um, uh, um, it is a, a, a term that is used, and the best way I can do that is to use an example, because that is what we find ourselves. And it 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 it, 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 it it's made up of three three propositions: a major, a minor, and one that ties things together. So a major proposition will be, um, for example, um, all black people are lazy right that's a major theme so all hmm. and they say jamu is black that's a minor and then i tie that together and say because all black people are lazy and jamu is black so jamu is lazy hmm. all right that's a negative hmm. you can say all white people are rich michaela is white so Michaela is rich well I, I I'm, I'm assuming you're very rich right <laughs> I wish I wish <laughs> so the point is you know the, my conversation is about syllogisms and how mm. we, we take different assumptions and we make them mm. reality in the in in our attempt to 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 prove a point in an attempt to win people over in an attempt to, 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 to gain whatever it is we want to gain in life, we use many of these sort of syllogisms. Some of these syllogisms make sense, some mm -hmm. don't. But the point is, it's a pattern of conversations that we found in the interact that we find in the interactions we, 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 we uh, encounter ourselves in nowadays, which has contributed to a state of um, a lack of compassion for each other, lack mm. of respect, uh, um, uh, contributed to the in, um, inequalities and the inequities we're having to deal with on a day on a day to day basis, and also um, emerging in 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 some of the microaggressions and discriminations that we are seeing uh, um, around us. Mm. Um, so what I'm going to try to do is have a dialogue, a dialogue where not a discussion because if i'm having a discussion i'm trying to prove a point i don't want to prove any point i want us to engage in a conversation to understand these processes just like i use syllogism uh, um to 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 um, um to illustrate you know the challenges we're having to deal with i'm not proving a point i'm just using it to illustrate to you yeah. and then hopefully you you understand that if we if you are aware of how we engage in conversations with each other mm. we might think well if this is not yielding the results we want maybe it should change the way we're engaging in conversations so that is what I actually uh, i hope what i'm saying makes sense to you but that is what Thank i'm going to achieve trying to achieve that day and i hope you're there to, I, to no, definitely what actually what, speaking of that quickly what day is it actually that you are it's, uh, that you're it's, talking it's, about? It's, it's on the it's the closing plenary that's the last day of the conference 100 okay. percent. yes i'll definitely be there i know it's not i think it's um it sounds so interesting and it's very much on obviously people um as you've mentioned judging people or grouping people together um without as probably as you've mentioned maybe subconsciously maybe not meaning to um and i think it's a conversation it's necessary because we'll make people reflect. And as you said, you know, it's it's your aim is to have a more of a conversation rather than a, a discussion or, or a presentation. It's just 
Yeah, it's very, very important. Um, and I guess linked very much to that then, um, what, what has been probably, um, the most significant milestones, would you say, in your, in your medical career? I'm not sure if it is linked to, to your talk or, um, or to the subjects around the talk. Oh. What's been the most significant milestone? That's a ve- that's a tough one. I <laughs> I have been <laughs> it's a tough one. I've been privileged to to be to have been recognised for so many things in my career. Um, um, um I I have this most significant milestone. I think I, I think the most significant milestone for me. Um, okay. I don't think there'll be the most be... special one, the more the one that meant the most, maybe if you have one. Okay, well, so there there, there is one and a half. Okay, I'll say one and a half. Why? Okay. So, um, um, after after my keynote at Amy, then that will probably be the most significant milestone for me in my career. But mm-hmm. as of today, the most significant milestone for me in my career, among the many is um, my honorary fellowship of the Royal College of um, uh, in Canada. Mm-hmm. Being awarded a, an honorary fellowship is is uh, is like um, that is that is that is you know a, 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 as a scholar um, uh, being recognised. I mean, I'm not a Canadian. I don't practice in Canadian. I'm international. I'm being uh, honoured and given an award is so is significant for me. But being able to speak on a podium uh um, like amy uh um as a and as in for, for, a, for an educationalist that mm-hmm. is because not all of us are going to get that op- opportunity to, to 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 deliver a keynote at amy right so for me that's one of those things that is uh, very significant definitely i think i think both of them are are brilliant achievements and i thought this might be challenging because when i was um having a look at you know your, your different profiles and, and the different websites that i found and i obviously found a couple of interviews as well um that you've done and you speak about so many such a large like such a large and a wide range of of um you know organizations that you've been a part of 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 yeah just so many incredible uh, i think achievements um and I, I think, especially within medical education, um, I think it's incredibly important. Yeah, thank you so um, much. I, I really appreciate that. You know, uh, thank you so much. I mean, that's kind of you. <laughs> of course. Um, and how would you say your your field has uh, changed since you start, first started practicing? Uh, it has changed a lot. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> No, we're we're now into the era of AI, you know. So <laughs> mm, definitely. Well, you know, this it, is very much the, another question that I have. Like, um, with such a rapidly changing world, how do you see the roles of of medical professionals changing, and and how do you see everything evolving, especially with AI? Yeah. I think. So you know, so I, I'll tell you. So um um. When I started medicine, I, I my first my first degree in medicine um, I uh, obtained in Nigeria, which is um, my roots. Um, so when I, I, um, I was born and raised in England, and my parents went back to Nigeria, I went with them. So I, I, I my first degree, my MBCHB was in Nigeria, and training there back then, you know, computers yeah. forget it. You know, um, it was like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you had to, we we will spend hours. So our lecturers will be dictating from their notes, and then we'll be writing their what their those writing it down, and then that's what we're going to read and use to study for exams. And you know, it was at that level when I wrote my first thesis that I wrote. First of all, I wrote it out, and then I went to this guy who had a typewriter. You know, those old things. Yeah. <laughs> And I'll spend hours dictating, you know, I'll sit beside him and he'll be writing out that out, typing wow. it out for me. And if it was if he didn't if he didn't understand if he didn't he couldn't read my 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 handwriting, I had to spell it out for him. So that's how I wrote my very first thesis. Okay. So that was back then. And that's I'm talking incredible. about this like in the in the um um the early mid-80s. Okay. Yeah. Then fast forward to where we are right now. 
I mean, um, um, I, I saw the I saw the advent of computers. You know, those are, you know first computer, and now I have a MacBook Pro uh, 14, and all these M3 and M10 and whatever they're calling those things. It it it. And now we're talking about AI medicine, and that's a totally different level. And 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 there is there has been a lot of change. Many have been very very benef beneficial for 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 us as practitioners, for us as learners, but also for us as recipients of care. But I've also seen I've also seen the um, the inherent dangers with the rapidity of all of the the innovations and it's going at a pace that i am truly concerned uh um, um uh, on how to manage it if you see the rate at which these the the, the um, technology is changing and the way it's being used but also being abused and misused so yeah. that is that is that is uh, th there is concern i wouldn't say scary at this point in time but there is a lot of concern, a lot of concern. Yeah, I think it's um, it's I think it, it's it's that way with a lot of industries at the moment. Obviously, um, I think it's definitely a lot more serious within healthcare because you're talking about people's lives and and their fitness and their well being. Um, it's not just possibly you know a robot taking a job. It's actually um, yeah, it's actually people's well being. Are there I guess this is um, very much related then, but maybe trying to look at it in a different way, not so much within AI. Um, are there any advancements in medicine and technology that you're actually excited about and that you can see changing the practice of healthcare for the better in, a, in the future? Or any tools in particular that you see help your students or help your colleagues or yourself, obviously, as well? Well, I mean, um, prior to the, to, I mean, I mean, um, I think ro robotics um, has been one of the, uh, um, you know, robotics in 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 the area of minimal inv invasive um, uh, procedures uh, has been one of uh, a, a significant. Uh, it has reduced the the uh, it has reduced it, the admission time. It has re reduced um, 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 rate of recovery. Uh, it has reduced uh, the precision um, uh, in terms of treatment. So those have been really been in terms of innovation. That's really been fantastic. Um, um, our uh, so I'm, I'm excited about that. I must say, artificial intelligence also has been really, really fantastic in the sense that. You know, we've, we've artificial intelligence has been around for quite a while, but what we're talking about now is it, this is like level 3.0, 4.0 of artificial intelligence because we've been yeah. using many of these these um, automatic um, uh, intelligence uh, um, um, software programs in medicine and at a very you know low level. I mean, just take for example the 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 uh, sensors that open the doors or the the mm -hmm. you know when you, I mean it's a form of artificial intelligence, isn't it? You know, mm -hmm. n n picking up movement as we as we uh, as we pass by, um, and and so it it at, again at the end of the day, it's 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 it all boils down to the responsible application of all of these yeah. technologies, uh, uh, which is where I am. I am an innovator in um, uh, uh, and have been involved in all sorts of innovative ideas um but in this case i am uh, i'm going to be i'll just be an early adopter and not an innovator mm. i'll wait for, for, for them to figure it out first before i jump mm. on the train so i'm not against yeah. it but I'll, mm. i really want it to have some to have it established and then see yeah. what are the merits and what are the the the, the, the dangers before i jump on board yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. And I think um, it's very much you you don't really have room within healthcare. Um, you don't have room for trial and error. You have to, especially 
if it's as you mentioned, you know, the robotics that help with procedures, um, you it's, you don't have trial and error within those sorts of things. And I think you kind of knocked it on the head when you when you mentioned that it's it's the it's how people use them. I think it's the um, it's yeah it's that people hopefully use them responsibly that they that they won't be taken advantage of or used to cut corners in any way. Um, speaking of which, um, what do you what are the challenges um, do you think for people getting into your field, um, and what advice could you give them to overcome the challenges um, when starting out? Yeah. So what are the challenges? You know. Um, uh, so you know that that is that that is that that is a, um, a question that you cannot give a singular answer to, because again, as I've learned over the years, you have to take it in, in, into context. Um, it's different for me as a person of color entering into a, um, entering into a, a profession that has been designed on the premise of the white male, uh, blonde, blue-eyed um, uh, um, physician. OK. As it will be diff difficult for um, um, uh, a person who identifies as a as a white female entering into the same profession, not to mention someone like myself who identifies as male heterosexual black of African ancestry entering into that same profession. Mm -hmm. Now, so when I answer that question, what are the challenges? I can only give you the challenges as I have ex the way I experienced it mm -hmm. as someone of color which has actually been based on uh, a position of disadvantage, a position where the premise has always been that you're not good enough, that you have to prove yourself, and you've had to, you know, constantly um, uh, show the world that you're good enough to, to, to be part or to enter into the program. Mm. Now, one thing I say i think that you know for you to succeed in, in 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 anything at all you have to work hard for it you have to be you know you have to put in the work and what i do know is that you also have to be smart about it you have to focus on the things that really make that difference that contribute to it you know you know if um a hard work without consistency is not going to get you is not going to get you the result okay mm -hmm work hard are you not consistent about it is not going to get you to where you want to go at the same time so you need both you need to work hard you have to be consistent you have to believe in and you have to have a goal that you want to achieve that i think um uh, for most people will help them um, make it in, in whatever profession but especially in the field of medicine you have to work hard you have to be consistent at it you know you have to you have to to uh, exercise that muscle uh, and stay and and stay focused. Mm. If you do that, um, then you you actually get to to the 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 the, the finish line, um, uh, mm. and that's about. And, you, and, and oh, importantly, you have to have fun. You have to believe in what <laughs> you want to do. You have to, no. Honestly, if you're doing something that doesn't inspire you is not going to work so you can even have you can work hard you can be consistent but if that whatever it is you're doing if it doesn't inspire you um yeah then you pro if you get there you're not going to be happy getting there because you just did it but it's not it's not going to be part of part of who you are i tell people you have to do something that if they wake you at one o'clock or two o'clock in the morning you jump and say hey let's go what do i have to do next <laughs> That's yeah that's, yeah that's a brilliant example yeah yeah <laughs> definitely um okay so just sort of wrapping up um our community is very much interested in um obviously communication skills and, and soft skills training how do you think uh, that we could improve i say we <laughs> i mean how do you think health healthcare um and the practice of medicine can improve the way um, that these sorts of communication skills are taught to students? Or do you think um, there is any improvements that could be made? So you, you might call me old school on this, but I think that, um, I mean, I believe I know I've done, I've done, I've written about simulation, I know about simulation, uh, but there's nothing irreplaceable than the human touch. Because at the end of the day, um, uh, um, you know, 
human beings are one of the most complex creatures on earth you know and everyone we all thrive on acknowledgement we all thrive on um, um kindness we all thrive on compassion you know we all like to be listened to we all want to be to, to be to be treated with respect so you know for me um communication has to go back to the core and that will be one of my messages in my presentation mm. um, our shared humanity mm. i think one of the issues we have lost is our humanity we've moved away from being our brothers or our sisters keeper to focusing on what's in it for me as long as it benefits me i don't care about the person we've moved on to oh because it's because it's not affecting me it's not my problem it's the other person's problem but i don't i think we have to move away from seeing as the other person's problem but make it our problem because that other person's problem sooner or later is going to be our problem so when we talk about communication i think we have to come from a, a humble and humanistic um um um, um, um you know paradigm uh and and you know engaging conversations you know when i'm having a conversation make that person the center of the universe for that you know that give them all the attention to make them yeah. feel the most important person at that moment mm -hmm. that's that's brilliant um and very yeah very powerful um what are your thoughts on um the method of of as i mentioned um of recording interactions uh, for practical training and for reflective practice do you have any thoughts of you um i don't know if you've ever actually done this before um or yeah what do you think so um um could you take that question again please so I said, what are your thoughts on the method of recording interactions, whether that be obviously um, real patient consultations or um, like simulated consultations for training, um, for practical training and reflective um, self-reflection? Yeah. So, so I, I support it, but there's one, one of what there's there is there is a there is a, an assumption we make, which I which I think is. Um, how does what would the right word to, to, to put it? Okay, so there is an assumption that um, the that method works for everybody. We we mm -hmm. we, we incorrectly assume that um, simulations and recordings are the way forward when it comes to um, um, communication skills development, for example. Mm -hmm. And I think that we have to um, leave that margin um, of exception that it probably might not work for everybody. Uh, we tend to assume that everybody um, everybody um, is the same and that everybody has to go through these simulations or do these recordings. And if they do that, they do that well, you know. And it's a conversation I'm having in a different area uh, in terms of how we, how we determine professionalism, like well, who's a professional and whose standards are we using to define professional uh, professionalism, just like education mm -hmm. and communication. Whose standards are we using to teach communication? And who says that that way? I mean, there are communities where oral tradition and, and narrative storytelling are the ways of communication. And how do you learn that? You learn that I, well, I there was a period in my life that I would sit on me, me and my cousins and my siblings, and then our grand, my grandmom, who she'll be telling us a story, and you'll be listening. And she could tell those stories, wow. And you say, wow, this is fantastic. But by listening and attending repeatedly, you learn how to communicate, how to tell stories. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's a different way of learning. It's, it's not simulation, it's not recorded, but it's also a way of. So the point I'm trying to make here is um, um, for us to take into account the cultural context of how we define or determine whatever educational method we want to apply. Mm -hmm. Simulations, recorded, um, recorded um, 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 uh, teachings are from the West, they're from the Western approach, 
from in medical mm -hmm. education. Uh, we use that as the standard in most situations. In Amy, um, that would be the standard, one of the standards of learning how to teach communication. Mm. Uh, but what we tend to forget is that that is not the only way to teach, and that is just one of the probably um, golden standards, quote unquote, that you could use to teach communication. Yeah. I think it goes back to your very, very important message and a very important point on um, to not not generalize people, but that every individual learns differently. Um, some succeed in some environments while others don't as well. And they need some different uh, methods. They need some different um, different techniques. Um, and yeah, that exactly as you said, that um, that to not generalize and not to put everyone in the same in the same box. Yeah, it it just it requires some humility. Um, it's mm -hmm. uh, I'd say I would rather use a toolbox the toolbox of um um uh, the toolbox uh, um uh, analogy that you know uh, and there are various ways to teach communication. Uh, one of which is simulation, recorded teachings, but there are also other ways. Um, uh, and 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 not just assume as we most most of the time do in most curricular uh, um, uh, designs that the best way to do to teach communication is this. I mean, there are different methods that we just acknowledge that, and that that is not the that it can't be the standard. Uh, and and also we have to be open to non-Western methods of teaching. Uh, probably that's out of the scope of this conversation, but it's something we should just we should, that we shouldn't undermine. Mm. Definitely. Well, thank you so much. I think that's a it's a good um, finishing point, um, and I appreciate so much for your time. And I look forward to your talk um, on Wednesday, next Wednesday. <laughs> um, I'll definitely make sure that I'm that I'm there. Um, and. So thank you so much for your time. If you have any any questions or anything that you'd like to say as well. Yeah. So I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm so um, it's been a very pleasant conversation with you, Michaela, and looking forward to meeting you in person. Yes. Uh,